Okay, we have looked at uh, the mean and the correlation and covariance matrices of uh, transformed uh, random vectors where the transformation is linear. Um, we also derived the distribution of such uh, random vectors. At this point, we will look at a special case where the, uh, uh, the transformed random vector is a Gaussian, a joint Gaussian, okay? Um, so this is a very important special case because we encounter jointly Gaussians and they, their transformations quite frequently in, in research. So let's define a random vector X, which is jointly Gaussian, and the mean vector is mu sub x, and the covariance matrix is uh, k sub x. And we define a linear transformation on this random vector um, through this expression, y equals a times x. Again, for the sake of simplicity, we will assume a is n by n and invertible. Um, but the results we obtain, again, are generalizable to where a is not even uh, square matrix. Um, I'm, I'm not going to uh, show you how to generalize the results, but uh, it's not that difficult. Now we start with this result we have obtained before, okay? And uh, here, of course, I, I separate this as, as this term here. And here I have just plugged in this uh, value to the joint PDF of the joint Gaussian. You have e to the power minus one half. Um, of course, whatever appears here, x minus the mean of x transpose times um, the inverse of covariance matrix times your parameter as x minus the mean of x divided by two to the power, uh, two pi to the power n over two times the square root of the determinant of uh, the covariance matrix, okay? There is nothing new here, just we, we are just plugging in A inverse Y to the joint uh, distribution of this multivariate Gaussian. Now, at this point, we just arrange the, the matrix terms and uh, this mean vector here, I just write it as A inverse times A times the mean vector. Obviously, A inverse times A is the identity matrix, which really doesn't have any effect on, on the value here. And I do the same thing here. And when I write this, I just have the common terms of A inverse here. So this here, I can write as A inverse times vector Y minus A times mean vector of X. Okay, that uh, appears here. But you see, when, when you have the transpose here, this will look like this. And if you remember, for compatible matrices A and B, the transpose of AB is equal to B transpose times A transpose. So this transpose will, will, uh, will result in this, Y minus A times mu X, transpose times transpose of A inverse. Okay, and also, I have the same expression here without the transpose. Now, I will group these like so. Okay, so you see I have uh, y minus uh, some vector transpose times some matrix times y minus some vector. And what is happening here? This, if you remember, was the uh, the uh, determinant of or absolute value of the determinant of transformation matrix A. So this is a positive value. Therefore, I can actually write this as this expression here. And another result from linear algebra here, the determinant of a matrix A, if it exists, is equal to the determinant of its transpose. So I can write uh, the determinant of A transpose here, multiply it by determinant of A, take the square root, which will not change the value, okay? But here in, in, in the denominator of this expression, I have um, the square root of determinant of A times the square root of determinant of A transpose times the square root of the determinant of 
covariance matrix of uh, X. So if you arrange it, you obtain the determinant of the matrix A times covariance matrix of X times transpose of A, right? Because again, if you have compatible matrices, A times B times C times D, anything you can have, as long as they are compatible, meaning that you can multiply them. If you take the determinant of this product, that will be equal to, um, if, if these are square matrices, that will be equal to trans, uh, the determinant of A times determinant of B, determinant of C, determinant of D, and so on. Okay, so this result from linear algebra we are using here, and this will, I mean, this expression combined with this will give me uh, this here. Okay, um, the, and ob observe that this matrix and this matrix here are the same. Okay, so what you see here is a to the power minus one half y minus some vector transpose times inverse of some matrix times y minus some vector divided by two pi to the power n over two. That makes matrix appearing here. Uh, take its determinant and take the square root. So this is precisely what a uh, jointly Gaussian PDF looks like. The only difference is now we have different parameters. Therefore, this here should be the mean of Y and this matrix here should be the covariance of Y. Therefore, we see that the random vector Y obtained through a linear transformation of random vector x which is jointly gaussian okay this y vector turns out to be also jointly gaussian with these parameters the mean vector of y equals a times transformation matrix times the mean vector of x and covariance matrix of y turns out to be a times <clears throat> covariance matrix of x times um, transpose of A. Well, these we already knew from linear transformations of random vectors. These are true even if um, X is not Gaussian, right? <clears throat> but through this uh, derivation, we have seen that the distribution of Y is also jointly Gaussian. That's the main observation. So let me state that. If you have a jointly Gaussian random vector X, any linear combination of random vector X will be also jointly Gaussian. And the mean vector is given by this and the covariance matrix is given by this. This is true even if matrix A is not invertible or matrix A is not square, okay? This is a very important result. 